guys, it's Sarah from Alcoin Best Ladies. So subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet and let's crack on with today's video. So we know that EOS and Trons Mainnet are coming quite quick and they both ERC20 tokens and I think it's quite important to see what sort of an influence the Mainnet launch on Ethereum. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So we know that both EOS and Tron are leaving the ERC20 technology behind to create their own native mainnet. Firms and partners have supported that decision and it seems this could become a massive problem for Ethereum. The launch of both coins native mainnets is already announced and in place, but some crypto enthusiasts, especially Ethereum enthusiasts, are not very optimistic about this and they predict this will bring those other altcoins down. And those people are not alone, as there are some Tron and EOS users that are not happy about it either, and that's mainly Tron, as they've been expressing their doubts about what the aggression will do to the coin's value. So Justin Soon, who is the founder and CEO, and he was also a protege of Alibaba's Jack Mas, so that quite helps his credibility, I guess, but that's not relevant now, has addressed this concerns by saying there's no reason to be alarmed and that the coin's development is looking to protect the user's interest. So over here, Sun says, the Tron Foundation decides that TRX only supports migration to exchanges for the sake of the safety of users' assets and hopes that this allows ordinary users to avoid the risk of losing assets just for missing the snapshot time in the mapping snapshot mode. This is a topic I'm gonna make a separate video on how to make sure that you don't lose all your Tron. As I know loads of you guys like Tron, um, I always try and stay away from the opinion about the certain asset. As I do the videos for you guys, not for my own purpose, and I know you guys like Tron, so I'll do that video again and we'll see how it does. But let's go back to the mainnet and the scalability, speed, transactions per second, and there was a massive rally that Justin and Vitalik had, and Vitalik made all the eight reasons why Tron won't be Ethereum, and it was quite entertaining to watch on Twitter to big, so you can say crypto celebrities, even though you don't want to, I'm not uh, talking about and arguing over things like that. But another thing that he says is that the main goal at the quarter three is to fully support threat party APPs and provide third parties with stable and reliable system level support, including the smart contracts, virtual machines, and optimized peer-to-peer -peer network systems. Whereas in quarter four, they'll focus on cross-chain communication and privacy protection. So despite the doubts, the migration announcement for both coins has created expectations that have strengthened them both. EOS became the fifth biggest digital currency. And I think it's very impressive what they've managed seeing as we are in a very bearish market over the last few months. I'm not trying to spread any fat, I'm just putting it as it is. I know I made a video about one trillion yesterday and I'm not changing my mind about it. However, I'm trying to say that we had a red sea for a very long time. There's not been any sort of massive gains. Bitcoin hasn't gone over 10k yet. And EOS somehow managed to go to its all-time high. So I think that speaks louder than anything else. So the migration to mainnet date is for, for EOS itself is June the 2nd, whereas Tron will start on the 21st of June. Both projects obviously work on blockchain technology and Ethereum's ERC20 smart contracts at the moment. Their migration will basically leave the whole tech behind. Uh, so ERC20 token is the Ethereum blockchain tag that allows creating tokens for trading. The full form of ERC20 is Ethereum request for government and 20 which is the number assigned to specific operation. So ERC20 has been around for about 18 months and it's Ethereum's primary tool. The network allows developers to foretell how tokens that are new to the market will do. It also sets rules for the miners. Other tokens use the Ethereum system and ERC20 sanctions. Those are the users to access data about tokens and transferability. So I think the main question that I'm trying to solve here is whether the migration can make a mess for Ethereum. And I would appreciate if you guys could leave a comment and let me know your own opinion as it's just me talking right now. And I would love to know what you guys think. I always read your comments. 
I don't always reply to them as my life is extremely busy. Bio comments mean the world to me. So please make sure you answer that question. Can the migration make a mess for Ethereum? And we know that the migration is a big deal as it possesses two coins that are in the top 10. As these both coins leave the Ethereum ecosystem, their users and resources will move as well which undoubtedly is not great news for Ethereum. Besides, Justin soon talked about getting their 100 million DApp members away from Ethereum to Tron's mainnet, and that could be really bad for Ethereum. After that, Mr. Sun has been signing the Tron's praises over Ethereum, much to Ethereum users' discomfort. They, the goal is basically to compete with Ethereum as a DApp platform, whereas the case with EOS and Vitalik is a bit different. Vitalik and EOS actually had a little bit of story. When they presented a code on GitHub, Vitalik had quite a go on, on EOS by saying it's not actually safe, that they should actually follow Casper instead of their own thing. I highly recommend you guys read it. I don't want to go into too much detail about it as I haven't researched it too well yet. It's just this article I think it's worth mentioning and showing how EOS is actually progressing and what their main is going to bring to the whole blockchain. So going back to Tron for a minute, ever since the numerous announcements that Justin always does, Tron seems to be still gathering support, new partnerships and growth. If Tron can actually move its 100 million DApp users away from Ethereum, it could possibly become the largest cryptocurrency in the world, but I highly doubt it'll happen anytime soon. So as we're talking about those three old coins, let's have a look how they're doing. So market cap is currently at 374 billions, and if you follow me on my Twitter, at CryptoSire, which I highly recommend to do, obviously, I've tweeted four days ago, just before the consensus, hoping it'll bring me some positive gains as following to this table of the what happened. What I've noticed about this year is that what happened in the past doesn't happen this year. It just doesn't happen. So I have made some smart investments. I thought I knew some of the entry points weren't the best. However, I took the buy and I went for it, which is not professional financial advice and neither is this video. And now we have this. So this is quite interesting, I think. But let's go back on to EOS, which is currently up 3% within the 24 hours. It's still on number five with over 4 billion ahead of Litecoin. We've got Tron on number 10, actually. Tron has got a market cap of almost four and a half billion and it's trading at six cents. And Ethereum, let's have a look on Ethereum, $689 and it's down one, almost one and a half percent in the last 24 hours. So guys, what do you think is the biggest competitor actually to Ethereum? Do you think it's EOS or Tron? But they're massive fight and we'll see who actually wins, who's actually better. Can Tron stand out to all his massive promises it made? Or will it be EOS, the one that seems to stand and be able to do everything? So leave a comment, guys. Let me know. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye!